Step one, don't forget to charge the battery when it comes in. If you're using this Schumacher uh, charger, it'll be orange on, and then when it's fully charged, it'll turn green like this. Now we're gonna disconnect the high voltage, and so you're just gonna pull this red tab up, or you'd use a screwdriver to help in that position. Yeah, actually do it from the top. We're gonna disconnect the negative side of the terminal of the battery, which is going to be this nut right here. Let's see if we can focus. Yeah, this guy, using a 10 millimeter wrench. Once the nut is loosened by the wrench, you can uh, twist it by hand. You don't wanna remove it completely, it's just easier to not to have too many parts laying around. So just go ahead and loosen that and then this negative terminal will just pop right out off the negative terminal. Next, we are going to the back side. If you recall in my part one video, the next thing we're gonna do is not to remove the positive terminal, but to remove the hose, the gray one right there. And then you're just gonna, we're just gonna pull gently off this plastic T connector from the battery, and then we're gonna let that uh, hose just hang there. With the hose removed, it just looks like that. And now we're gonna go to the battery itself and we're gonna remove this nut here as well as this one right there. And this bracket will come off. After that, we're gonna tilt the battery so that we have access to the nut behind the positive terminal in order to loosen it. I'm just gonna use this 10 millimeter uh, socket wrench to loosen this guy right here. This one you, you will need to remove completely. So we're just gonna pull that out here and stick this aside. The top one behind that green cable will require this extension on the socket wrench just to be able to reach back there. I couldn't catch the technique on camera in action, but once you loosen the, um, the nut holding the battery, rather than using the ratchet itself, I just, I just turn it by hand. It's just a lot quicker. So after the nut right there and right here are removed, then this bracket just pull right out. I'm going to set this aside. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch this on camera, but we're gonna try to tilt the battery here so that we have access to the terminal on the positive side in order to remove it from the battery itself. So on the bottom here, there's a lip. So basically we're gonna move the battery up a little bit and then kind of jut that out. There we go. Now we have access to this nut right here, and that's what we're gonna loosen with a 10 millimeter socket wrench. So last time I said we should remove this black cable, the only purpose for that is to give us uh, slack in order to move the battery, but it looks like there is enough slack in this um, cable right here that we don't need to remove that. So now this positive terminal should just slide up, and there it is. And so now nothing else is attached to this battery. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this battery out. I'll keep the camera running in case I can do it. And there we are. So this is comparison of the old battery here and the new battery here. So two differences. Um, basically there's parts on here we need to transfer over to here. The first one is going to be this T connector for that gray hose. That's going to pull off here. Oh, that came off pretty easy. And then that will just reattach to this side here like the last one. I'm going to do that a little tighter off camera so I can use two hands. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a Torx and we're gonna remove basically this discolored kind of bronze color piece. And we're gonna relocate that over here. So we can see the silver piece um, is identical on both sides of the battery. The only difference is this bronze piece. So we're gonna remove this, put it on the positive side and remove this one, put it on the negative side. 
So I found the size of this Torx is going to be a T30. So that's this guy here. Now with the T30 attached to the screwdriver, we're gonna go ahead and remove this. That comes right off. And so we're gonna do one at a time. Never wanna to touch the positive and negative terminals at the same time. So it looks like this guy right here goes through here into the hole right there. So we're gonna line that up. And uh, it's always a good idea to do it by hand first. And you can do it kind of gently so as to not strip uh, the screw. A little firm. And we're gonna move on to the next one. So these are actually coming off fairly easily. I was afraid that it would be actually a little bit more difficult than this, but. My concern actually when I got the new battery was that these are built into it and that I got the wrong battery, but apparently not. Great, so now we have uh, both poles on, the negative, the positive, as well as the T connector. So basically we're just gonna put, pop this back in. Before I put the battery back in, I just wanted to do a little detailed view of the specs here so you know exactly which battery we're putting back in. So this is a 20 amp hour battery where it says right here. And then this is the model number, AUX18L. AUX18L. So basically we're just wedging the battery back in so we can get the positive terminal back on. And then we'll put the battery back and sit in, in its place in the tray, put the negative on and then put the hose back on. When you're doing this, make sure you don't crimp this cable from the, the black connector underneath the, the positive terminal. So again, we're gonna seat this in place. There you go. And this black hose, or sorry, this gray hose is gonna go back onto the T connector. So just a little warning, <laughs> you saw in that earlier footage that once I put the negative terminal on, there is a spark. So keep your hands away from the metal part and just be careful when you're putting it on. So now with the negative terminal seated correctly, we're gonna go ahead and uh, tighten the screw right there. Just so that you're not scared of doing this, when you put the negative terminal back on the post, you did see that spark and it does spark and it's nothing to be concerned about. Um, as long as you're not touching the negative to the positive together, and especially when you're tightening that uh, negative side, the wrench or whatever you're using that's conductive, make sure that part doesn't accidentally touch anything in the positive side. So just be really careful that they don't connect. But the fact that you're touching that, I mean, I tightened it by hand. You saw that I untightened it by hand as well. So it's fine in that sense. Um, it's just when you initially put it on, you should expect a little spark. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the bracket back on here. When you're putting this bracket back on, just make sure the battery is seated all the way so that when you see down through this hole, I know you can't see it from this angle, but you do line up with the hole on this uh, bottom plate. So it seems really simple, but one thing that people had trouble with is putting this black piece back down. And you would think that you just do the reverse and you pull that out and you'd simply push this down. But the little trick, which people haven't really talked about, and I think they just wiggled it enough times where they just kind of figured it out. But I did read through some BMW documents 
And basically you're gonna pull this tab out and rather than pushing this straight down, we're gonna hold this red tab and we're actually gonna back it up just slightly. There's a little play in here. You're gonna back it up slightly and then down. Like that. But one thing is people that were concerned about the car not running unless it's registered. So that is not true. You do not need to register the battery for the car to operate. So this is the wireless OBD2 reader that I used for connecting the Beamer Link app to register the battery. This one's made by a company called Vgate. I can't put this in the description below because Amazon no longer sells this version, but any other one should be working. I'd probably just recommend reading the reviews and making sure it works for BMW. And um, this ran me about $23 uh, shipped, well, plus tax. And that's it. And so basically, you're just gonna take this out and you're gonna put this in your OBD2 reader um, underneath the foot well of your vehicle. And so you're gonna look for a, well, for this particular version, the Wi-Fi name is called Vgate. And so you just set your cell phone to look for Vgate. And then you open up the Beamer Link app and in there will be a section labeled battery, click battery, and there'll be a button that says uh, register. And then you tap that and then it'll register within a couple seconds. The last thing we're gonna do is put this newly cleaned front back in. So again, it's always a good idea to tighten these by hand. That way you don't strip them by accident or cross thread. And then you can use a tool to tighten those. So again, one, two, three, four, and then there's five and six. So after the battery install and I plugged in the charger, the light was turning orange for a little bit and then it did blink red several times, which means it is not charging. So what, so what some people reported in the forums is doing is they left the car overnight and then the next morning the unable to charge error went away. For me, I just drove it for less than a mile and then I came back and then turned off the car, turned it back on and then the error went away. So we're climbing back in. Before I went on the one mile drive, over here in orange text, it says unable to charge. And there was a symbol similar to this, except down here with it crossed out. And so right now that is gone. I'm gonna close the door and start the car and you'll see how the dash looks like. So I do have service due and I think that's what that check is for. If anyone else knows, you can leave me a comment below. I'll otherwise be visiting the dealer just to check that out and see what it's about. And so that's it. Congratulations, uh, you installed your new battery. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me comments uh, down below. Thanks.